Welcome guys, we're all just getting organised. G'day Chris, how you going Walter? Just getting the finishing touches on, we'll be uh, on with the show in a moment. Had a huge week uh, over at Mind Lab, so that was uh, fantastic. They really looked after me. Big thank you to all the guys. G'day Stacey. How you going, Peter? Kathy. G'day, Bill. Howdy, Frank. How you going? G'day, Jenny. G'day, Jeff. Thanks for coming and joining me, Frank. Howdy, Matty. How you going, Matty Hahn? G'day, Guy. How you doing there? All right, I think we're just about ready to go, Guy. Okay, welcome to the Mind Lab Show. This is where you'll get all the tips, tricks, and information you need for your next gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventure. This episode includes an update on the gold price, a look at the Mind Lab demo days from the weekend, and a great top tip, a couple of good stories in the gold and treasure news, plus much, much more. I'm Gold Digger Dave from Miner's Den, and let's get digging. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. Well, we come back with the gold price. And the gold price is still hovering around the $2,500 per ounce Australian mark. And looking back over the last six months, we can see that the price is just above where it was six months ago. So it hasn't really done a lot for us. But there's always many external factors impacting which way the price will go in the coming months. Some key factors include the ongoing financial effects of the fight against COVID-19 on global economies, the creeping level of inflation getting plenty of press coverage in China, and how it manages the Evergrande debt challenges. These are all factors that will have some influence over where investors put their money, as we very well know. Over time, gold has proven to be a solid, secure, long-term proposition. Let's hope the return we get on any targets our trusty metal detectors uncover continues to grow with the positive rise of the gold price. Our weekly giveaways for now, up. Weekly viewer giveaway, once again, comes from Miner's Den and Mine Lab. We've teamed up to give you another fantastic offer, and we've got one of our caps over here and of course a t-shirt. Now I've got caps and t-shirts there in um, uh, large and extra large. Also, um, I've got uh, to also to be in for the running for one of these, all you need to do is let us know you're watching. Say good day in the feed. Suggest a new segment. Simply ask a question. Remember, if you're in the feed, you're in with a chance and we'll announce the winners throughout the show tonight. Good luck and happy prospecting. I've got 10 of those to give away. Let's have a look now at our coin, gold and treasure news. If you've been looking for a bit of motivation to get out with your detector over the summer, check out the story on the Daily Mail Australia website. A great story about a bloke named Kevin Dunkett in the UK. Using his metal detector, he found a fragment of an old crown from the Tudor, din Tudor dynasty worn by Henry VIII, estimated to have a value of around about two million pounds reward, which was both shared by Kevin and the landowner. If you'd like to learn more about that story, check out the link in the feed, and it's well worth having a bit of a read. There's also another story on the ITV website. Um, it's amateur metal detectorist Charles Cartwright, for the first time out with his detector, found stolen treasure that had been buried after a robbery in Roman and Viking jewellery, as well as a few Egyptian relics as well. This stolen treasure ended up being returned to its rightful owners. Again, if you'd like to learn more about that story, 
jump into the feed and have a read after the show. Uh, it's up time now for us to have a look at our segment, Gals in the Goldfields with Rhonda. And this week, we look at Bessie Way. Hi, it's Rhonda back again for another segment of Girls on the Goldfield. And I'm looking at, at a very important part of our goldfield history. Those who cared for the sick and injured who were on our goldfields. A very important girl on the goldfield was matron Bessie Way. Bessie's full name was Florence Jane Elizabeth Way and she was born in Adelaide. But let's rewind our story. It begins in Kalgoorlie, Western Australia in 1883 when tens of thousands of optimistic prospectors flocked to the area. This was a very remote mining community and along with that came lots and lots of problems. There was no sanitation, there was incredibly short water storages and so disease was prevalent. Also the mining activities they were incredibly dangerous so it was a perilous place to live not just for your health but for your safety also in terms of accidents at mine sites. In 1895 the hospital advertised for a matron. They were going to pay £151 per annum as well as offer free living quarters. Bessie applied for the job and she got it. Now Bessie was the daughter of a very very famous surgeon in Adelaide so she had incredible training at the Adelaide Hospital. So Bessie and her mum set off on the exciting adventure from Adelaide to Kalgoorlie. When they arrived Bessie's mum was totally appalled by the conditions of the hospital and then even worse when she saw the living quarters that her daughter was going to be living in, a hessian tent. Her mum would not leave the town until they found better, safer living quarters for her daughter. So they did. Typhoid took hold of the goldfield. Typhoid is a terrible disease. It is a waterborne and foodborne disease and the conditions were so terrible in Kalgoorlie because of the sanitation and the lack of clean drinking water that so many people succumbed to it. In the early years almost 20% of the young male workforce died with most of these deaths occurring out on the goldfields. Ten times more people got the disease. It, this was the largest typhoid outbreak in Australia's history. Nurses worked around the clock, incredibly long hours, some of them just dropping from exhaustion. Also many caught the disease and died as well. Matron Bessie, she worked as hard as anybody else. The role of matron was certainly a hands-on one. During this time, matron Bessie was described by the papers as winning the gratitude and affection of the prospectors by her untiring devotion to her duties. Or the Coolgardie miner said, she is the guardian angel of the institution, probably the best known and honoured of her sex in this part of the world. High praise indeed. However, like so many others, Matron Bessie got typhoid too. But luckily, she survived. She went on to meet her husband, Arthur Harvey. And then after a few years, she went back to being the matron of the hospital again. And she led it into being the, one of the most flourishing and best run institutions of its time. Thanks to Matron Bessie, she helped ease the suffering of so many and saved the lives of so many on the goldfields. That's it for today. I'll see you next time for another episode of Girls on the Goldfield when we see all those women that helped shape the history of our gold rushes. Okay, well, I think we've drawn our first couple of winners of the prizes uh, tonight. So we've got Vicky uh, MC, Vicky MC on Facebook and YouTube has got Bob. Congratulations, guys. You've got uh, yourselves uh, a T-shirt and a cap each. Now, look, uh, we're coming to the segment now where we're going to chat about Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. We're always getting heaps of feedback from people. And once again, we're going to take a look at some of the fantastic finds people of all ages are having with Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. Here, Jamie Underwood shows us his results from his new pan and pay dirt bundle. He highly recommends the Mind Lab pans and was very pleased with his purchase. Alan Cabot has a 12 year old son, Jack, who loved panning for his 0.22 grams. Alan says Jack woke him at 6.45 a.m. eager to get started. And Kirsten W. was stoked with his find of just over 1.5 grams of gold from his bag of Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. 
I've found plenty of gold digger Dave's pay dirt still left for that unique Christmas present gift. Uh, over $50,000 worth of nuggets and fine gold in every batch. There's redeemable and collectible tokens in uh, many of the many of the buckets or the bags that we sell. Uh, we're talking about Australia's richest pay dirt here, and this is no ordinary gravel. Available in 700 gram, 950 gram bags, and 4.5 kilo tub. Of course, we have the combo packs with everything you need, uh, paired with the MineLab Pro Gold Panning Kit. So, if you're looking for pay dirt, we have between our mini patches, you're all going to be guaranteed some gold in every bag anyway, and the chance of getting a redeemable or collectible token out of the bag as well means that you have about one in four or one in five chances of getting something extra in Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. Now on the big buckets, we're actually going to have a guaranteed return, as you know, of around 65 to 75 percent of uh, what you uh, pay for. It's a thousand dollars for that tub, take it away, pan it off, you pan it a few times, make sure you have something to catch the um, catch the spillover or the stuff coming out so that you can repan it and get the best value out of Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. So when people are around and you might say they throw something extra in one in 20 or one in 50 or whatever they happen to do, just remember, Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt will get you something, about one in every four or five gets something extra from the pay dirt, plus you learn how to pan correctly as well by practicing and reusing the dirt. Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt, Australia's richest pay dirt from the Golden Triangle in Victoria. Now, next we're going to uh, have a bit of a look at um, uh, what we did at our demo days. So last weekend, uh, we had demo days on across the country. I was lucky enough to be at the one in Adelaide. These were the first and last uh, Mine Lab metal detected demo days uh, for around the country uh, for 2022. So, <coughs> Mine Lab Superstores held one in Penrith, one in Bendigo, one in Melbourne and of course one in Adelaide which was the one that I attended. These days are run by the Mine Lab expert and attendees learn about the whole range of units that are available. We cover things like the price points, what's best suited for what type of searching, coin and relic machines or gold machines and the differences between them. As well, purchasers were also able to feel the weight of the machines and when they bought the machine could get advantage of, take advantage of the super deals that Miners Dead had on as part of their 12 days of Christmas offer. So this is a great little promotion, and I'm just going to show you a few pics from around the stores uh, of the demo days. I started out this morning as the sun was breaking through Just poking around the bush hoping to find a piece or two I hear a little signal and I dig the target out And when I drop it on the coil I give a little shout I found gold, I found gold, it's a beauty to behold I'm on the gold field swinging me detector It must be a couple of grams that I've got here in me hand I found gold, I found gold Swing and me detector. Okay, in 2022, our demo days will return again on a regular basis. Normally when we can run them, we like to run them once every month, once every couple of months. That helps prospective treasure and gold hunters make informed decisions on the best mine lab metal detector for your needs. Now, of course, if you're using our metal detectors and you're using a mine lab, you're in the 95% of Australians who go with the Australian brand leading the way, Mine Lab. So keep dropping in. When you come up next time, drop into a demo day if you're thinking you want to get into prospecting and we'll be able to certainly look after you with the correct information and you won't feel pressured to buy something that is of a different brand just because somebody has it in stock. We only sell the Mine Lab detectors and that's why we're known across the country as the Mine Lab experts. 
Now, we're going to come up now and have a look at a top tip again. And we have another one from uh, the Coffee Bush Kid. Let's see what he has to say this time. G'day folks, this is a Coffee Bush Kid. And today's top tip is all about beating fatigue. If you're out there swinging and you're not weary, you will have a better and more productive day. The first part of this is the equipment side. Now, to beat fatigue and make your detecting experience more enjoyable, a good harness and a bungee cord, I find, is a really good thing. It takes the weight of the machine, it takes the muscle strain off your arm, or both arms if you're using both of them, and it just means that you can detect for longer without muscle strain. When you're out swinging in the field, the posture you don't want is one where you're bent over like that all the time. It's like you're looking at the ground and you're really just about to pick something up, but it plays hell with your back. What you really want to have is just one where you are relaxed, standing upright. Again, you've got the bungee cord taking the weight of the detector so there's no weight on your back. And you can just be upright, comfortable, and that way, you'll last longer and beat fatigue. Another thing you can do to help reduce fatigue in the field is to have multiple breaks. Uh, when I'm out detecting with my mate Pete, we usually have a break every hour to hour and a half. You get to talk, you get to really relax. Naturally enough, you'll take a coffee and some cake and bickies, and I think we really look forward to the, to the breaks more than to detecting sometimes. Another thing that you can do is when it's a hot day, try to pick yourself a shady spot to detect when you go out. Naturally enough, you should also have a hat, sunscreen, probably sunglasses as well, but don't go out on a 42 degree day detecting in an open field. You're best off being in the shade or detecting early morning or late afternoon. Another must with detecting and for beating fatigue is really to keep your fluid intake up. Take yourself plenty of water because there's nothing worse than being dried out in the field. If you're starting to get thirsty, your brain's not working at its best capacity and you'll start missing the targets that really you're looking for. All these things that I've just discussed are what I do and they help me beat fatigue and last longer out in the field while I'm detecting. I'm the Coffee Bush Kid and this is a top tip for the Mind Lab Show. Thanks again, Coffee Bush Kid. He's bringing some fantastic tips on how to get the best out of your uh, Mind Lab equipment. I'll uh, just give a couple more shout outs here to um, uh, Facebook winner Adrian A. Congratulations, you've won yourself a cap and a t shirt. Uh, Tony H. from YouTube, you've scored as well. Um, uh, Margaret S. on Facebook, you've got a cap and a t shirt there. And uh, YouTube, a DR, uh, you've got a D double E. Ah, you've won also. Congratulations there, guys. We've got a few more to give away as the show continues on. Now, we're going to have a look at our store offer now, and as you would know, uh, our 12 days of Christmas for this year has finished up. There were many, many people across the country that have saved a bundle and got some great prospecting and treasure hunting gear. Uh, there's still time if you want to get gifts you need for Christmas and have them shipped to your doorstep for the big day. But you'll need to get in by next Monday, which is the last day that um, Australia Post is uh, guaranteeing that you should be able to get your uh, gifts delivered uh, in time for the, the 25th, or it'll probably turn up on the 24th, probably. But uh, they are very, very busy. Uh, it is certainly the last time we expect that everything is guaranteed to getting there. There may still be some things that will get through as well. Now, if you're looking for Christmas gifts and things, Miner's Den are doing their uh, price match option this time. Um, so all you need to do is go out there and get your best deals, come to us, and we'll see if we can try and match those or better them uh, from uh, what we can. You'll find you'll still get our fantastic service and everything like that, and you'll be getting some great deals. We're not going to be able to do it on everything, but we're certainly very, very uh, competitive on the whole range of MindLab gear now. 
the coin and treasure detectors we've now got those coming with a free red sand scoop so you can dig faster in the beach and you're also scoring a finds and rubbish pouch now this offers exclusive to the minersden.com.au so if you're looking for a um, detector look at the coin and relic detectors from mine lab they are the best and you'll be able to get a junior out there with some of the stuff that's on offer and they'll have everything they need to really get started the correct way. Now look, I've also uh, decided we'll have a late special, so I've just thrown this one up there now. Uh, this is going to be the Mine Lab Pro Find 35. These are back in stock and they're walking out the door at our super price of $200. Okay, look, this is a very short special. It's only available until Sunday and right on time for Christmas. So check out Miner's Den online or drop in to a Miner's Den store for heaps of great Christmas ideas. Of course, if you haven't got to everything you need and left it a little late, why not get onto minersden.com and score yourself a gift voucher. These are emailed through to you almost immediately, so you'll have something for the big day, and then you'll be able to come in at your leisure. Miners Den are going to be trading on all of the days over Christmas, with the exception of the public holidays. So you'll be able to pop in then, get what you need, or put the voucher plus what else you need after talking to one of the Mine Lab experts in the Miners Den metal detector superstores. So now we're going to have a bit of a look at uh, our product uh, spotlight here, um, and it's. Uh, got uh, uh, another new uh, product in there. We're going to look at the Bankwish 540 with the Coffee Bush Kid again. G'day folks, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid and my usual weapon of choice that I go out detecting with is the mighty Mine Lab Equinox 800. But I was given the opportunity over the weekend to take out the Vanquish 540 Pro Pack. A mighty beast that comes with a 12 inch and an 8 inch elliptical coil. When I first took it out, I left the 12 inch coil on it and I took it to some areas where I knew that I should be able to find some decent relics. I had been there before, but I wanted to see what the Equinox may well have left behind. It was a little bit surprising. I managed to pull up a keg tap when I was in the relic mode. I went out to uh, a local reservoir on the beaches there where I put it into the jewellery mode. I did come up with 50 cents and about 50 pull tabs, but that is in fact par for the course. I then changed the coil to the 8 inch elliptical and went through some trashy ground where I was hoping to pull out some more relics. And I did manage to find myself a 1916 penny in amongst a whole lot of rubbish. I was mightily impressed with how it worked. Now the Vanquish 540 Pro Pack has four settings that you can set it to. It has a coin mode, it has a relic mode, it has jewellery and a custom. Now when I took this out, I specifically did not do any discriminating with it like I do on my Equinox. I wanted to see how it ran as far as a switch it on, set your mode and away you go and I reckon it performed brilliantly. Now the Vanquish 540 Pro Pack comes with multi-IQ technology and like the Equinox, it's very easy to switch over because the target ID numbers are the same. So, at the end of the day, what did I think of the Mine Lab Vanquish 540 Pro Pack? It's a bloody good little thing. Uh, I took it in all sorts of areas and I wanted to use it so that it was just a switch on, set a field, and away you go. And it performed admirably. It's great that it comes with two coils. The larger 12 inch for the more open areas, and down along the beaches and so forth. For all those little trashy areas, or the parks where there's lots of trees, dropping down to the eight inch coil was absolutely brilliant. So, if you don't want to fork out the, uh, the extra money for the, any of the Equinoxes, this, this you should consider very carefully. It is a brilliant little machine. But then again, if you want to have a, uh, a Mine Lab arm extension, I don't think you could go past this one.
I'm the Coffee Bush Kid, and that's been the product spotlight for the Mind Lab Show. Now, I got a little ahead of myself uh, before, so I thought I'd uh, bring this up now. Here is the Miner's Den sand scoop. We've just brought these uh, in. Got a big batch of these coming in. They're walking out the door at $95 each. Um, we haven't got the handles for them yet, but we're about to look for a handle that will fit onto these quite easily. So uh, if you're looking for a metal sand scoop with the ability to put a long handle on, Miner's Den have got you covered again. These are available in all the Miner's Den stores and online for $95. So it's just another option for our sand scoops that we've got there for you now. Next, I'm going to have a look at um, our viewer questions. So this week the question comes from Sharon S who writes, Hi Dave, when did you first start detecting and how long did it take you to find your first nugget? Okay, thanks uh, Sharon, that's a, a fantastic question. I got out and did a bit of detecting back around about the 1985-86 using a Garrett Groundhog. Whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to swear on the Mind Lab show, uh, but then we moved on to the Mine Lab 15,000. Now, uh, my parents bought this off Ian Aiken when he was running the uh, Miners Den Melbourne store in Whitehorse Road. And even then, they were on a waiting list for the Mine Lab technology all the way back in the day. It was three months before they were only able to get hold of their machine and head to the gold fields. I'm not exactly sure when my first nugget came up, but I certainly started to find a lot of gold on a regular basis using the MineLab SD2000 super detector. This was the first of the, the super detectors. Uh, when this machine was introduced, we were finding heaps of nuggets and it was not unusual to find two ounce, three ounce, five ounce pieces in the old workings back in those days on the gold fields. Now I still spend a fair bit of time hunting for gold around Bendigo and uh, Central Victoria and recent years, I've also got into the coin and treasure detecting as well. Some of the coin and treasure detecting things have been very, very good to me. I got $870 in one and $2 coins from inside Olympic Park. I also picked up $469 worth of one and $2 coins at the Eastern Creek Raceway. I've also been around to Western Australia and done a few trips over there, hunting for precious yellow stuff and love getting up into Tipperborough uh, and done two or three trips up that way and been finding a bit of gold when I've been up there as well. So I can't tell you exactly when it came out, but I do know that if you're walking around with a mine lab metal detector and you're in a gold fields, sooner or later, if you're using the machine correctly, you are gonna walk straight over some pieces of gold and drop them into your pocket. That's the advantage of using mine labs world beating technology on both the coins and relics and gold hunting. So my next question comes from uh, Dennis, who asks, Dave, an old family friend always said he knew where to find gold and when, where he lives in central Victoria. And when he retired, that's exactly what he would do. Sure enough, that bloke came up with two huge gold nuggets. He showed me, and believe me, they were huge. He said he found them wrapped in the roots of trees after hitting the root bases with high pressure water. I thought most detecting would be done on the flat ground or mullet keeps, but this has got me wondering whether tree roots are worth a bit harder going uh, when detecting. Are tree roots common spot for gold nuggets to be found? Do you need to have a special detector to look for those targets in the tree roots? Okay, look, there have been uh, many um, nuggets that have been found in and around tree roots. These places are, are great spots to work carefully. The tree roots quite often bring up the uh, gold over the years, nuggets and some fine stuff, and can be moved, helps it move closer to the surface, which may then be in the reach, within the reach of your metal detector. There are a couple of pitfalls, however. People often put rubbish down the trunk of old trees and the metal detector can quite often react to this if it's a large object. On some occasions, detectors will also get a weak signal off the tree roots themselves. This is especially true when the roots have been burnt and the charcoal, uh, they may give you a bit of a signal, but also when they get extremely wet, sometimes they can react to uh, some detectors. 
tree roots and the ground under them where the tree has been uh, growing are also good spots to hunt. This is often exposed when the trees are blown over in storms, etc. And uh, that helps uh, uncover ground that we may not have been able to see previously. So yeah, I would think that uh, it's well worth going and having a look around those tree roots and places like that. And thanks again for your question there. Coming up now, we take you to our gold hotspot. And this week, we're heading to Batemans Bay and Nowra regions. The opening paragraph on this section in Doug Stone's book Metal Detecting for Gold in Australia is pretty black and white. It simply states that, and I quote, the coastal goldfields stretching downstream along the Clyde River through Nalogen into Batemans Bay estuary and gullies surrounding Mogo carry gold. Okay, so Doug's research has confirmed the presence of the precious metal in the Batemans Bay area. Batemans Bay is a beautiful coastal township about three and a half hours drive south of Sydney, surrounded by picturesque mountains and valleys. It's worth a visit anyway, but the story of gold and this region, taking in places like Braidwood and Nara, is a different story to that so familiar in terms of the gold rushes associated with Victoria and other parts of New South Wales. Although gold was first discovered in this region in the 1850s, making it one of the earliest gold discovery locations in the colony, the search for gold would involve painstaking work, seeking alluvial deposits, rather than stories of diggers virtually tripping over the big nuggets, sometimes found in other parts in well-known gold fields across the colonies. The level of difficulty is reflected in the fact that so many Chinese diggers worked this area. The Chinese were well known for their industrious approach to mining and their willingness to work areas otherwise deserted so often by other diggers. Nearby Mogo was reputedly one of the richest areas in this region, with many gullies offering diggers plenty of fertile ground for uncovering gold in those early days. The Batemans Bay region is richly endowed today with national parks and many of the gullies and the mullock heaps left behind in those early days have virtually been flattened by logging or overgrown with the luxurious tree ferns and other flora that flourishes in the area. Today's prospectors, armed with their state-of-the-art metal detectors, may well find it worth running those detectors over some of the ground that has largely remained untouched since those early efforts to recover gold. This region is fed by many streams and tributaries and there are plenty of areas running along creek beds where prospecting today is permitted. Whether you're panning beside a stream or running your detector over the remnants of mullock heaps and riverbeds, the area offers plenty of scope for prospecting and generally enjoying a beautiful part of Australia. This part of Australia is rich in history, natural beauty and has many reminders of past generations with architecture and plenty of tourist activities. Check out Doug Stone's Metal Detecting for Gold in Australia and the many New South Wales online tourist resources. And remember that line in Doug Stone's book, these coastal gullies and fields carry gold. Okay, that was another fantastic hotspot. Be well worth uh, packing your bags when we can move around a bit more and heading over and doing a bit of digging around that way. Now, we've got the prizes still to give out. I had a couple left here to read out on Facebook. I've got David R and Jem Q. On YouTube, I've got Kelly H and Neil L. So congratulations, guys. You've all got a T-shirt uh, there. Now, I think there's extra large is what most of them are and large. Plus, you're going to get one of the uh, Minus Den Mind Lab hats. Um, so that's a fantastic uh, giveaway. That was 10 of them. Uh, if you had your name read out, I think Corey's let you know in the feed. So just let him know your details and we'll get those out to you uh, very, very shortly. Well done to all the winners and thanks for getting on board and getting involved. Also, if you missed anything tonight, I'll have more great giveaways next week 
All you have to do to be in with a chance is let us know that you're watching, say good day, and or suggest a new segment. Simply ask the question. Remember, if you're in the feed, you're in with a chance to win. Well, I can't believe it's come up that time again to say goodbye for another week. But it's time for me to tell you what we've got lined up for you uh, next week. Firstly, we're going to have a look again back on what a year it's been for the Mind Lab show. We're also going to do, make it our last show for the year and we'll be back mid-January with another show to kick off 2022. Before I go, let's see what is coming up. We have another top tip from the Coffee Bush Kid, a fantastic gold hotspot you might want to visit over the break. Rhonda's coming back again with some more gals on the gold fields and all the usual segments that make up the Mind Lab show. I'm Gold Digger Dave and you've been watching The Mind Lab Show. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, subscribe and share. Tune in next week for another episode of The Mind Lab Show.